Hello, oracles! Well, I've just finally moved my son into college, so I apologize for being away for a while here, but now it's time to get to work. So today I'm going to break down for you my entire portfolio strategy. Now again, this is not financial advice. This is just what I am doing for my portfolio to give you guys an idea of what might work for you and something you might be able to add to your portfolio, tweak it, or maybe if you're newer to investing and you're not really sure which way you wanna go, this could provide you with an idea of a way that maybe it could help you out. So to get started, I did invest in Tesla heavily several years ago, you know, and actually since then, the stock has just kind of come down and sat sideways, but I did make some good money on it, did some swing trading with it. And over that time frame, I kind of, you know, kind of adapted myself and my own investing uh, personality to what I currently have right now. You know, the emotional swings that happened through it. I helped a lot of people on this channel as well to go through a lot of that. And what I learned over that time frame is taking your emotions out of investing is going to be the most important thing you can possibly do for your long-term future and for the gains you're going to get in that portfolio. Those who can weather the storm when it comes to high volatility and you guys have the stomach for it, have at it. Sometimes those people can make a lot of money, but they could also lose a lot of money. For me, I'd rather be a lot more conservative and keep my emotions and stress at a very minimum. I just want a stress-free, growing portfolio that's going to grow my passive income through dividends and interest and other things to be able to get myself to a point in the future where I can retire on that passive income and I didn't have to worry about stress of playing options or playing swing trading or any other thing like that. So today I'm just going to break down for you guys what that strategy is, and I'll kind of go over a few of the different stocks and ETFs that I have along with that. And I'll do a full breakdown on my entire portfolio later. This today is just going to be kind of about the strategy of what I'm doing for my portfolio to keep it what I like to call the lazy river of investing. I'm still going to be growing my portfolio. My portfolio right now is growing, you know, right around with the market about 10 to 12% annually, but I'm also growing my passive income. And that to me is the most important part is growing that passive income underneath helps kind of build that snowball to grow that portfolio even faster. And it will eventually get me to the point where I will be financially free. And it gives you that, excuse my language, that fuck you money. And that's that money that you can use in your life to tell whoever it is, maybe it's a landlord, maybe it's a job, a boss, whatever you want to just say, F you, I'm done. I have enough money. I don't need you anymore. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. That's what the strategy of this is. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's not going to happen overnight. This is going to take some time, but in the long run, it's going to give me a very strong foundation of that F you money. All right, so to break this all down, I just color coded it. Um, obviously, you know, you guys can do whatever you want. I share this entire spreadsheet over on my Patreon and I apologize to all of my patrons. I have not updated this just with things going on being in Nova Scotia, then moving my son into college. I can now get back to all of this and update it all and share it with everyone over there. But I will uh, get to the point where everybody can take this whole entire spreadsheet and use it for yourself if you wanted. I know there's a lot of people out there who share spreadsheets. I've seen some that are way better than mine. So by all means, you don't need to use mine, but my whole thing breaks down everything I have. This is my entire stock portfolio. I also have on here my entire PL. So I do a full budget for myself for the entire year. I actually just finished my 2025 budget and then I put all of my expenses in here. So my entire expense breakdown gets put into this spreadsheet, automatically gets transferred over to the PL, and then I can see where I'm tracking on a regular basis to see where I'm based off of my budget. But again, eventually I will get that out to you guys. Um, and when that happens, I will let you know. But back to this. So color coded here, these are my high income plays. Now these do have a lot of NAV erosion. I am still positive on them all. So by putting in a lump sum of money, not dripping that money, I just put in, it was 50 shares originally. These did reverse splits, so they're down to 16. But I kept that value the same for these and just take that money on a monthly basis and put it into other plays that I have out there. So again, that's all this is for. This is just high income. I'm not rolling into it. I'm not looking to hold these long term. I'm holding these to be able to supply the rest of my portfolio with more cash. So right now I'm getting about $173 per month from all of these five plays. I take that money and distribute it elsewhere. Eventually, once the other plays that I have surpass this and make this a very small amount, I'll just get rid of these altogether. I won't need that. Next is going to be my stable income plays. So these here are going to be higher yield. So looking at the yield on some of these, we've got 
almost 16% for SVOL, 14.5% for QQQI, and then they go all the way down to about 3%, but these are going to be some REITs that are in here. Those are real estate investment trusts. I've got some BDCs in here. So I've got a lot of different plays in here. None of these I drip either. I take all of this cash and I also save that up. And so I take that money as well and I distribute it accordingly. Next up are going to be my long-term ETFs. So these are different ETF plays that I've got here that are going to be very long-term, but they're constantly going to be growing over the long-term and they're going to be growing their dividends and their payouts over the long-term as well. So these are a much smaller portion of my portfolio, but I'm adding to these on a regular basis. Next are going to be my individual stocks. Everything in the blue here are all dividend paying stocks. Many of these are in most of those ETFs, so there is a bit of overlap in some areas, but when I break down all of my stuff by sectors, it's balanced very evenly. And same for these here, I'm going to be adding to all of these on a regular basis, and these are going to be growing long term. Now, I do check all of these on a regular basis. If there's anything where there's going to be maybe a dividend cut or there's maybe some issue going on with the fundamentals, I will assess it and make a change if I have to. But many of these companies you can see on here, you know, AbbVie, ExxonMobil, Pepsi, Coke, uh, Starbucks, which just had a nice little rebound, Procter & Gamble, Home Depot. I mean, a lot of these are going to be companies that are going to be here for the long term. You know, I've got Visa, American Express, and then some of the Magnificent Seven that started paying out dividends. I've got Microsoft, Apple, Meta, and NVIDIA also on here. Then I've got my growth plays. These are non-dividend paying assets, but they are growth plays that I can either swing trade with if I wanted to, or some of which like SoFi and Palantir, Amazon and Tesla, I think those four will eventually pay dividends. So you think about something like a meta, you know, if you were investing this, you know, for the last 10 years, they weren't paying a dividend, but you were accumulating a lot of shares over that time frame. Now they're paying that dividend and you get that nice added bonus. That's how I'm looking at Tesla, Amazon, SoFi, and Palantir, adding to those now because I feel eventually that they are going to be paying out a dividend and that'll be a nice little bonus. And in that growth, I also have my cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge, and Sheep. Sorry about that. Just realized I had my microphone not plugged in. Hopefully the first half was not too bad for you. Now we're going to get down to the meat and potatoes with hopefully some better audio. All right. So looking at here. So here's my strategy going forward. Each one of these sections is going to be equally weighted. So I'm getting to that point. Some of these are a little overweighted in some areas but I'm going to be building it up to be equal weighted. Now each section is going to be higher than others. So for instance, this section here is my stable income. Looking at the formula, I'm aiming to get all of these to $1,200. So each one of these I'm aiming to get to $1,200. This column here is telling me if I need to add any to that to get it to that $1,200. So right now I don't need to add anything to it. Looking at my long ETF plays, that's $1,100. I don't need to add to any of those. Looking at my income growth plays, I'm aiming to get these all to $425 each. Now I do need to add $14 to Occidental and I need to add $16 to Google and $5 to Microsoft. So $35 total, I need to add to these. Now for my growth plays down here, I have these set at $250. I don't need to add to any of these, but I do kind of watch them from time to time to see if there's a, a you know big drop or something that I can add to it that's out of proportion. But I kind of set those specifically for that because now I don't need to use emotions. I'm literally letting the market tell me where I need to add. However, I have phases and I will show you the guys those phases in a minute because down here I have my cash. So I have 4.31% cash in my portfolio only. So just for my stocks out of the $53,500 in my portfolio, $2,300 is cash and that's 4.31%. My goal is to get that to 6%. So I want to get this to 6% cash right here. And so because of that, I'm not going to be adding to any of these positions at all until I get this to 6%. Once that's at 6%, then I will start adding to these positions as this climbs over 6%. And so I'll show you guys on my notes here. So this is my August investing and I update it every single month. And this is just the phases that I have created for myself. And again, this takes all of the emotions and all of the thinking out entirely. I've done the thinking ahead of time, but then when it comes to the day of, do I want to add, do I not want to add? This is how I set it all up. Now, again, there's a lot of other factors that go into this. You've got to look at the values of the companies, follow their earnings, see what the EPS is, make sure that you're still tracking along in the same way, make sure the fundamentals of the company haven't changed. A lot of other factors on a very specific company by company basis go. However, assuming all of the companies are still growing, assuming all of these companies have no fundamental issues whatsoever, these are all equally weighted. So 
I just follow the market. So what I'm looking at, so for instance, over the last month, Visa has been down significantly. Visa is not going anywhere. Visa is going to be a very strong company. So when you ask yourself, you know, how do you win in the stock market is buy low, sell high. Well, over the long term, history has shown us that time in the market beats timing the market. So just buying at any point, most of the time, there are obviously outliers, but buying at any point and holding for long term, you're going to be buying at a lower point than you would be potentially selling it in the future. So when I look at something like a visa, whatever the price is, chances are in the future, 10, 15 years down the road, it's going to be higher than what it is right now. But is there a way for me to potentially buy it at a lower price? Well, by setting up my portfolio in an equally weighted manner as I have, I can take a look at it and I can say, oh, well, Visa is now dropping well below a lot of the other stocks and it's underperforming, but the fundamentals haven't changed. Yes, we do have some things going on with the economy. Consumer spending is in question. It's been coming down. However, there's a very good chance that that's not going to last very long. We saw the same thing happen in 2008 and 2009, and it obviously rebounded significantly since then. So if you feel like we're going to be getting through this time, chances are that's a good time to buy. Now my portfolio flagged to me, red light, red light, Visa I needed to add money to. And it kept on doing that. And I was like, ooh, hey, I can see this. Now my portfolio is showing me Visa is underperforming, becoming a better value. Maybe you should add to it. So that's what I did. I added to it. And Visa has been rebounding a little bit recently. Again, I'm not looking at the short term. I'm looking long term. But when you're looking at growing dividend paying companies to grow income over time, you want to be buying those for a lot less. So it's like saying, hey, for every dollar I spend, I can go and buy myself 10 cents. But now all of a sudden it's on sale and you say, now I can spend 90 cents to get 10 cents. That's a better return. That's what we call yield. So that yield had been going up. I just do it based on the dollar amount so I can physically see this is the number of dollars to add to my portfolio. And so again, looking at the phases here, I've now pushed myself into phase six. I still need to finish the 5% cash for phase five. I just made 10 phases and each phase is a percent of cash. So I want to get this to 5% cash. I do feel like we are going to be getting into a very difficult economic time, potentially a recession coming up. I want to be ready for that, having that cash on the sidelines to take advantage of that. And again, to buy those dividend paying stocks at a discount to buy income for a lower price is going to be huge. So I'm saving up that cash, but again, I don't want to miss out in the market. So once I get myself to 5% cash, then I can take a look. And again, my portfolio was at 6%, but that's also because I've already achieved all of my phase six levels for my stocks. So I'll hit 5%, I'll hit 6%. At that time, my dividends should be roughly around $425 per month. Then I go into phase seven and it's very simple. So once I have achieved all of these on a phase six level and 6% cash, I then go to phase seven. I will update the spreadsheet to show it is going to be phase seven with all the formulas. And once I'm at that point, I'll get to see, well, hey, now I need to add a certain amount. And I went in order by highest yielding income that stable income plays first, because that's going to generate even more income for me to be able to add to the rest of these as a snowball effect. So I just snowball these all into this. Then once I'm done with all of these, I make sure I build myself up to 7% cash, and then I move on to phase eight. Very simple. No emotions whatsoever. I literally just follow the numbers that I created for myself. And now, of course, I'm constantly tweaking this. I'm constantly updating things. I'm constantly noticing, hey, you know what? This might work better. I might change this. I might do that. And again, going company by company to assess every single one of the holdings that you have to make sure that there are no fundamental issues, to make sure that, hey, I do want to keep this equally weighted with everything else. For instance, Labor Day weekend, I'm going to have some extra time. I'm going to go through my entire portfolio. I might thin some things out. I don't know. I'm going to go through and assess everything because I'll look at something and say, hey, dividend growth on this is you know 3% every single year annually historically. All right, that's great. 3% raise isn't bad, but there are other ones that could be 9, 10, 12%. Maybe I want to switch those out. Then I take a look at the sector. Is it the sector that it's in? You know, Do I want to keep that? And I want to make sure I keep things balanced. So Again, there's a lot that went into all of this and a lot of the thinking I did to make sure that I put the portfolio together in the way I did so it's very balanced. And I don't have a lot of fluctuation in my portfolio. I don't see the thing drop significantly over time. If the whole market comes down, my portfolio comes down. But it's not like I'm looking back when I was heavily in Tesla and the market may be going up and then Tesla comes down and I'm like, I'm way underperforming the market. I'm basically in line with the market. So when you're looking at my beta, which is, you know, a beta of one is basically in line with the market. 
I'm going to be slightly below that. You know, based upon the stocks that I currently have in the ETFs, I'm probably around like a 0.75 or a 0.8. So I move less than the market. So it's, again, the lazy river of investing. Very simple, but I can still take advantage of some of that growth. When I've got the Teslas and Amazons and some cryptocurrency, I have actual growth stocks that are going to be paying dividends. The dividend is super small, but there's a lot of growth potential behind it to increase my entire portfolio value. And one of the reasons I did this was because I look at the last few years, inflation has gone up insane. So we're now out here paying so much more money for everything. And I guarantee you, most of us didn't have our income from our jobs go up as much. And a lot of people are out there struggling right now, trying to make ends meet, despite the fact that, you know, they have maybe gotten raises over the last few years, but it hasn't been up to inflation. That's the big thing is, is yes, CPI may have shown that we only went up 2.9% year over year, but that's based on last year. Last year was up about 5% from the year before. And you keep on going back in the last four years, we've seen inflation go up unbelievable amounts. So people trying to keep up with that, I guarantee very few people were getting raises that were going to keep up with inflation. So now I take a look at, well, how can I grow income for myself and get raises on my own income for the future? So when we get to a point where, hey, inflation's going up, can I keep up with that inflation? Well, that's where I put in here and I can see my comps over last year. Now, I just started dividend investing back in January of 2023. So again, very small amounts coming in. But I take a look at this year, I made $977 in January. Last year, I made $39. Then $632. $42 in the year before. So again, this is a 2,400% raise month over month, 1,300%. But again, that was when I first started. So let's push a little bit further along down the line here. Let's go to July. July was really starting to get more heavily into it. So I made $190 in dividends in the month of July. Pretty awesome. This year I made $410. It's a 116% year over year growth. Now here we are in the month of August. Last year I made 275. Now it was at this point here where I started investing a lot more heavily in those high yield income plays. Now I learned very quickly that the nav erosion was going to wipe a lot of that out. So I quickly switched gears. Again, you've got to be an agile investor. So the last four months were going to be much higher numbers last year, but my overall returns were not as good. So this year I'm at $224 so far in the month of August as compared to the 275 last year. I'm probably going to end up passing that, but it'll be pretty close. So now I look at the full year overall. This year overall, I'm at $4,370 in dividend and interest income. Last year, I was at $4,227. I have already made 3% more. That's basically a 3% raise over last year with my income, and we haven't even finished with August yet. Yes, I have been contributing money to this, but most recently with my son going to college, I've only been doing like 25 bucks a week. So most of this is growth on its own. And next year's comparisons will be a lot more accurate as well, as I will be basically running this entire strategy consistently going forward. So 2023 was a big year of me figuring out the strategy. And I finalized that around February and kind of tweaked a little bit since then. So I have thinned out of some of those high yield income plays to get myself to the point where the nav erosion isn't going to be affecting my portfolio overall. And now I'm at the point where I'm basically just riding on all of my other ones that are growing. So again, the year over year comparison next year will be even more, but even with those high yield income plays strictly based on income, I'm still over where I was last year by 3%. So again, looking at the inflation at a 2.9%, I have now overcome inflation based upon this income from last year. Again, we still haven't even finished with August yet. We still have four more full months left to go of the year. So that's my strategy right there. Hopefully I explained it well to you guys. Again, it's really just a matter of figuring what stocks and ETFs you want to have and that you're comfortable with. I have no stress about any of mine whatsoever. If I do have stress about it, I typically have to just go and dive back in and say, all right, well, why did I purchase this one in the first place? What is it performing for me? What is it doing? Why did I buy it? And then I can assess from there. If I don't give myself a good answer, trash it. No reason, you know, just get rid of the thing. Very simply, taking emotions out entirely. And then I just follow the numbers. That's all it is. When my spreadsheet tells me to add, I add. Cash is the number one important thing for me right now because I want to make sure I have that cash to take advantage because I think that we're going to be getting that tougher economic time. Worst case scenario is we don't, and I still just have that extra cash on the side. Not a big deal. So again, I don't think it's a bad thing to have 10% of your portfolio in cash, especially when there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. And for me from there, then I just watch it go forward and I just see, hey, 
I have more money. I could put money into my portfolio. I have excess cash more than what I planned on having. I can go and spend that on something. Where do I want to spend it? My spreadsheet will tell me in order from top to bottom where to spend it first. Very simple, very straightforward. That's how I've set it up for myself because I don't want to have my emotions in there. I'm busy working all the time. I want to spend time with my kid when I can, when he's going to be coming home from college. I got to go to parents weekend in a few weeks. So for me, I don't want to have to think about the stock market at all times. Set it and forget it. That's the strategy of this portfolio entirely. And that's where I'm at. And what I'm going to try to do is give you guys a month to month update on this so I can show you how this whole strategy has been playing out for me and you can see how it's all been growing. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support. Have a great one.